Okay, so now that we're happy with our design, uh, we're going to move on to doing the stencil. So we've got out here, I've got a normal Bic pen, which I, I use them for every stencil if I'm doing it hand drawn. I've got the design, obviously, and I've got some stencil paper. Now we're going to start by removing the first layer. that bit we don't need and the second now you can keep the back layer or you can remove it it's just preference really on how how thick and sharp you want the stencil to be but I always keep it in I don't think it's that much of a difference um, and then we're going to place the design over the top and that way, whatever we do, when we peel it off, it'll be on the other side. So, let's begin. Now, I'm going to start by just getting all of the outline um, and trying to think of just breaking it down, making it as easily readable as possible. Um, and at the same time making it into shapes now I like to make it just into very basic shapes that you can see from a mile off when you come to actually tattoo it you know the more nice it is to look at it won't be too complicated you know it won't look like a road map um, so it wants to be really clear for when you're tattooing it Now I've decided to do um, the stencil this way, being um, hand drawn, just to change it up a little. Now I, I normally do the stenciling on the iPad, which would be um, it'd be in the same program, so it'd be Procreate, um, and I'd just outline it exactly the same. But just in case you don't have that program. I mean, you can always do the design uh, by hand, and that might be how how you're doing it. So this would be the way you would be doing the stencil both ways. Now I will add in um, the programs and how I would do the stencil, and just a few tricks and tips. Um, as a lot of the time with some stencils I'd use um, Photoshop and use a filter to do the stencil but I do like this way I think it gives you a practice at the design before you do it, it it's a nice way to get your head around how you're going to tattoo it you know and like I said it gives you a bit of practice And when I'm doing these lines here as well, um, you do have to press quite hard because if, if, if not, it will come out quite a lot lighter on the other side, you know, so do make sure that you press down quite hard. Um, and any, any progress you make on the stencil, you, you can always just flip it over and have a look and see how it's turning out. And there might be some bits where you need to go over and just just sharpen it or darken it up, make it a bit more dense.
Right, now that we're getting a little bit into the stencil, I'm just going to peel it off there and now I've got a light board set up here um, which now you can just hold it to the light um, but with this here we can see how much we've got done there um, and that like Now it doesn't have to be a light board, it can just be anything that's got a hard surface. You know, you don't you don't want to be doing the stencil on something that's um, soft. So anything, anything like um, a glass or a worktop or anything solid. And just really take your time with the stencil. You know, there's, there's no rush. Um, the stencil wants to be, it's a very important part of, of the tattoo, um, you know, because without a really nice good stencil it's going to be very hard to read and make into a good tattoo. So my advice would be if you do make any mistakes on the stencil, um, I'd, I'd just start again, you know, it, everything wants to be right with the stencil before you even start. You'll notice here as well, I don't just do it in one line. I'll be almost rubbing it, you know, just to get it really solid and pick up all, all of the carbon you can within that line. And wherever there's any little black bits, you know, just colour them in. A lot of times as well, even on the design, there might not be such a clear line, but as I like to think of it as more of a, a puzzle, jigsaw pieces, you know, of shapes, I'd line it anyways, because when you're tattooing it, you're not going to be looking at the stencil as the reference, you know, you're going to have a separate reference to go off, so you're not going to see these lines on the picture that you're using as a reference. So it is, it is quite hard to look at, you know, with all these lines and how it's going on. But when you turn it over and have a look at the end, it'll be very clear. Especially when we start getting a few shades, you know, going over where the shading's going to be. I always like to keep the lines always going the same direction so I will just spin the paper around um, and that just makes it easier for me it is just preference though you know some people might just keep it straight and be moving around but I just find it easier that way
Right, we're on the last two leaves here. And a little bit of the third one. And then we'll move on to putting the shades and where they're going to be. Right, awesome. I think we have all the main outlines in now. So let's just check that over. Yep, brilliant. So, and now we move on to where the shades would be. So I'm gonna put these floor lines in. Now I've put them in so they look like lines, but they'll just be ever so slightly lighter. You know, more of a, a marking. That way, as if I were to tattoo it, you know, on the leg as I've done the design, um, I'd maybe just adjust them or change them. It gives me option then. So now I'm going to start picking out the shapes. So I can see here just where these shades are. So that's, there's a bit darker here and this would be the shape that I've gone for the whole, whole of the shade. And then I see it gets a little bit darker as it gets to about here. So I've put two lines in here. Um, you can see a bit more there. here as well and it's just picking out them shapes anywhere where you can see a, you know a shade and where it goes round I'm just marking it in there same again it gets a lot darker here as it goes in so I've put I've put two lines where the shades are and that way I know then that this bit's um, one sh like lighter as it gets out, you know. I think just breaking it into two shades there as well, it, it makes it a lot more clear to me um, when I look at it as a stencil. And where you can see where the we've got a hint of some lines and that that's even putting them in there um, and even putting a couple more it gives me the direction of where the petals go in and how I want to make it so the shades follow the same line um, and that way it'll make it just look a bit more 3d as well. And it's exactly the same for the leaves, you know, wherever you see parts that are a little bit darker, you know, just really separate them shades on the design um, when you're doing the stencil. I find for me, when I break it into shapes, that it becomes a lot more readable 
when you're actually tattooing it you know rather than you know you can just literally start shading um, or some people as well they'll do dots where the shades are like this and I just found that this works best for me you know so feel free to just experiment with what works best for you and how it how it's readable the best as a stencil for you as well now that it's starting to um, now that the design's starting to become a lot more complete with the stencil um, where the where the dark parts in the design are I'm just going to start adding some lines um, not as much in the second um, lines but more just in the corners and that will just separate each petal and it'll when you look at it from the other side it'll just make it really clear just to look at and wherever is black you can colour completely in you know make it completely black But what you're aiming for is just to make it as clear as possible to look at from the other side. And even where, you know, it might not be a dark part in the design, but it might just separate two petals from each other and make it a little bit more clear to read. So, for example, here where there's two petals and that's a light grey, but I will just put a hint of a couple of lines there and that, you know, it makes a massive difference to separate the, pe the two petals from each other. I'm just marking out a hint now of the shadows that's going to be under the petals. And then we're going to just put some lines there under them as well. Let's get a solid dark bit here. Now what I would even do here, as I know that it's going to get darker towards the leaf underneath from the shadow, I'll just even just start shading it with the pen like that as well. And the same for the background, you know, just draw in where the shades are going to be and just separate them a bit more as well. And then where we have some of the petals that have not much of a shade, we can just put, like I say, put some shade in there. With the stencil process, I think it's it's very down to how you um, find it best. Once you've had a few practices um, and tried to tattoo the, uh, your design on the fake skins, you will find a way that suits the way you tattoo it best um, and the way you like to do the, the stencil process. I think the the best way that I would recommend is finding a process that's the same every single time. You know, I always add these double lines to separate the shades and I do the same process every single time. Then I know when I look at the stencil exactly what I'm going to be doing when I tattoo it. I mean, for me, right here, this might be a few different shades, um, which I can do that when I'm tattooing, 
but just to make it really stand out as a stencil and make it a lot more simple that would be an easy way of doing that Another great thing about having the shades in the stencil and making it really dark and clear for the background and making it stand out is um, when you stick the stencil on um, an actual person it's very clear to read in the mirror and when they have a look at it as well. Okay, so now we're at the point where we've got all the lines in, we've added a few shades in the areas and we've built it up. Um, I've just added some sections here where these are the parts that I want to leave or have very little shading in on the actual tattoo. Um, or even just where it rolls over on the petal, you know and it's just to make it a lot more contrast so having the areas where we're going to have solid black um, and then these parts are just where we'd have um, no, no ink or very little and by just putting them in it gives me an idea of where to shade you know so we've got the dark we've got maybe a medium and and where them shades are but I can shade up to this line you know and that would be it would give it a lot more of an effect rather than just blend it out and shade the whole the whole petal you know I like to just split it up into sections and that way it makes things more 3D um, and it just works better for me Um, so these are my techniques and what I find best but I guess the more stencils you do and the more you tattoo the stencils as well you'll find what works best for you um, and what is best to look at for your eyes and how you tattoo it and how you go about it so I like to use a lot of lines for, for everything on the on the stencil but you can use dots you know you can even just shade the areas it doesn't have to be these at all this is just how I find works best and especially when I turn it over and that's that's pretty much how the stencil is gonna look when it's on the skin so I find it's very easy to look at it separates the petals well and this works for pretty much any design, you know, whether it's a rose or even a face. You know, I find having an order of the way you do the stencil and it's the same every single time, it, it's a lot easier, you know. I think the more you differ away and do it, if you know, you'll find a process that works best for you. But yeah, there we have it. That is our stencil done and finished. And now we're gonna move on to actually tattooing it. The exciting part.
So there we have it. This is our stencil now complete. Um, I'm just going to run through a few things um, about the whole process um, that I I use. So I've done some very dark shades in the background just to make it stand out when I'm looking at it when you stick it on. Um, I use a lot of lines to separate the shades and more put it into sections I suppose so you think of it as dark grey, medium, light grey just really splitting it up into different sections and that way when I'm tattooing it I know right that's that shade and that's that shade and then once it starts piecing together when I'm tattooing it I can then start blending it but it just really makes it contrast and easy to read now on the leaves I've just put the basic directions of the lines that are in and then when I'm tattooing it I can add the textures in there but I I wouldn't put all of the textures into that leaf because it'd be very confusing and a bit too hard to read whereas at the moment with the basic essentials of the leaf in there I can then look at it and do a similar texture for the leaf but by having the basic structure of it it'll look how it's meant to and it'll have the right shades in the right place 